Yeah. What ship were you on? This one here. You were on the Sullivan's? Yeah. When yeah. were you on the Sullivan's? 1951, uh, well, almost 52 to, to uh, 56. What brings you here? Camaraderie, friends, the ship. Yeah, that's what it's all about. I started chipping paint in <laughs> 1951, and here I am again. <laughs> Bruce Belling, USS Sullivan's. When were you on board? About 54 to 56. What did you do for a living? I was an engineman. A what? Engineman. Engineman, yeah. Aren't they called snipes too? Yeah. What are you looking for? Lights that aren't working. And then what are you going to do when you find them? Hope we fix can fix them. them. All right. <laughs> Just like we used to do. Back when? Back in 61. What ship? At USS Abbott. What brings you here? Just to try and make it look nice <laughs> for the people. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lee Rush. I was on the USS Singersall DD-652 back in the mid-60s. Uh, we come to these field days because uh, we're glad to see these ships preserved for people to come and view and see what the military is really all about. Uh, a lot of people come that uh, served on these and visit them, bring back the old memories. and We're just trying to keep them in shape so they're halfway presentable. Uh, thank you. Mandy Anderson, retired HT, which is Hull Maintenance Technician, I retired out of the Navy. I served on uh, a Fletcher class destroyer during the Korean War. And I've served on five destroyers. And this one here, I want to get it fit back out so it'll be a beautiful show piece. My name's Dick Clark, Richard Clark, um, member of the USS Sproston. Uh, because of the uh, Fletcher class destroyers and the love for them, um, I found that the uh, USS Sullivan's was in Buffalo and was close to my home and needed some help as far as restoration and uh, decided I'd like to come up and give a hand on trying to restore the ship. So Dick, tell our audience why you think it's important to preserve ships like this. Uh, that's very important. Uh, my children that are middle-aged right now uh, are very interested in the fact that there's something remaining that their father served on during World War II and uh, uh, a place that they can go bring their children to see a ship that is uh, a beautiful ship of the United States Navy. In addition to taking a look at a lot of the work that's being done on board the Sullivans this weekend, I thought we'd go on a little tour and take a look at some of the spaces. This is the Chief's Quarters, and as you'll see later on, the enlisted men's berthing area were not nearly as luxurious as what the Chief Petty Officers had. Those are the senior enlisted men on the ship. And woe betide the young sailor who ever came into their domain uninvited. They don't call this the old goat locker for nothing. Here we are in a typical cruise berthing area of the Sullivans. Underway there would have been uh, 80 men sleeping in here at night. You can imagine uh, how hot, how humid, and frankly how smelly it could get in a compartment like this with 80 bodies packed three high. But it's a lifestyle that guys got used to, and frankly some of these fellows will tell you that this is the best time of their life, believe it or not. With so many men in the crew living in such crowded conditions, you can imagine that space was a real premium. These little foot lockers underneath the bunks, this is all the space a sailor had for all of his possessions. Petty officers, senior enlisted men, had these stand-up lockers that were slightly more spacious and a whole lot more convenient. Rank has its privilege. And with ultimate rank comes ultimate privilege and responsibility. The captain of the Sullivans had a private stateroom, which served as his in-port bedroom and office. Although spartan in its appointments, it was an efficient and comfortable compartment where the captain could meet with his officers, catch up on the endless paperwork of command, or simply stretch out with the latest Mickey Spillane crime novel. Until a frantic phone call from the bridge or quarterdeck 
summoned him back into action. Hey, look, honey, I found the steering wheel. <laughs> no, it's not a steering wheel. This is what's called a watertight door. On naval vessels, it's incredibly important to maintain what's called watertight integrity. If one compartment floods, you have to be able to seal that compartment off from the rest of the ship to keep your ship afloat. A watertight door brings a rubber gasket in close contact with a steel flange, making a tight seal so the water can't get through. It's the Navy's way of keeping the wet out and the dry in. Very important if you want to stay afloat. These five inch guns are the main armament of the Fletcher class destroyers. They were good for shore bombardment as well as anti-aircraft fire. These babies brought down a lot of kamikazes in World War II. Let's go down to the ammunition handling room and take a look at some of the shells that these things heaved. Here we are in the ammunition handling room just below the gun mount. Around me you can see arrayed the projectiles, the five inch shells. These things weigh 54 pounds. That's a lot of misery for the people on the other side. The propellant, the gunpowder, comes up from the magazines in these dredger hoists, is placed on these little elevators, which then send it up to the turret. Likewise, the projectiles are also loaded on these hoists, which go up to serve the guns. A well-drilled, disciplined gun crew of a five-inch gun could fire for short periods of time, 22 rounds a minute. That's good shooting. A stroll through the parking lot at a tin can sailor's working field day is like a quick geography lesson. Destroyer men come from all over the United States to participate in this annual four-day event. This year, two even came from as far away as Germany. For four days, they work and live aboard this historic ship. Long dormant shipboard habits and routines become familiar again as the participants take their meals, sleep, work, and relax aboard this fighting ship. When the time comes to bid each other a farewell until next year, these tin can sailors have provided the know-how, the muscle, and often the materiel to slowly but surely improve the appearance and structural integrity of the Sullivans for another year. Four days of working side by side and sharing old memories and common experiences renews a bond between the participants. They usually arrive as strangers, but they always depart as shipmates. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this brief glimpse of our Navy's history through this short tour of the USS DeSullivan's here in Buffalo, New York. The Museum of America is full of wonderful things like this, and I think it's time for us to get back on the road and check out the next one. I'll see you there. <laughs>